Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about link aggregation on the TrueNAS Mini 3.0 X Plus that was provided to me by IX Systems for review. And this demo is all about why you'd want to do link aggregation, the benefits, and a couple caveats and some of the requirements for doing it. Before we dive into this topic, if you could click the like button and first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And we'll start with the lab setup that we have here. Now we have the TrueNAS at 192.168.3.139 and the lag that we're going to build that doesn't exist yet is going to be at 192.168.3.2 and 3. And then we have a Unify 16XG, a Unify 16XG. We have an XCPNG for part of this demo um, running some VMs and it's connected at 10 gig to this switch. Each one of these red links represents a 10 gig link. Now the TrueNAS has three of them right now. One is the one currently in use, and the next two are the ones we're going to bond together using LECP. Now let's consult the manual right here and talk about a couple of scenarios here. Aggregation works best on switches supporting LECP. Now I happen to have Unify set up and I have some 10 gig Unify switches, so that's what I'm doing this on for all 10 gig. This will work with LECP and one gig as well, but it is important that whatever switch you're using and many managed switches do support this, LACP is an important factor in that. So if you have an unmanaged random switch, this is probably not the demo for you. Um, Manage switches that have LACP support. You can, you know, look at the instructions or details on that particular switch, make sure that they have it. Uh, that is essentially a prerequisite for the way we're going to set this up here. A couple other notes. With the way this is set up, it is not going to solve your MPIO problem, multipath IO and iSCSI or NFS. This is for link aggregation to get the aggregate bandwidth of bonding to 10 gig ports together, but not going to increase your iSCSI connection from 10 gigs and bonding them together so doesn't give you 20 gigs on iSCSI or NFS if you're using it for a virtual machine share. This is just a note that it's just not going to work that way. And they have some, you know, different talks about this and they have some more in depth that goes out of scope of here of how to set up a multipath IO and they have some links on there, for example, on ESXi. I maybe do other talks on that later, but for now, that is not going to be in scope. We're just talking about link aggregation and of course why we're doing it. And the big why is because if my computer wants to talk at 10 gigs to do a file share and another computer would like to talk at 10 gigs to the file share, under normal circumstances of having a single 10 gig link, they're going to get saturated. And I drew it up this way because my computer has a 10 gig link to this and that has a 10 gig link to this, but they're all singular. That means this has a single 10 gig link. So as long as I am on this switch and another device on this switch and they both come at the true NAS, well, it's going to go less than 10 gigs. And I'm going to give you a quick demo before we go further. So right here is 5201 and 5202. This is an actual, you know, KVM, essentially how we log into the TrueNAS Mini. I've talked about this. It has a IP over HTML5 IV, IKVM. And what I'm doing is, you know, showing you what's on the screen right here. Then we're going to bring over. I have SSH into two different machines. One is my computer and one is the Debian 10 lab. Where does this lab live? It's right over on here. It's one of the VMs running on this XCPNG system. So we're going to go here and this one's going to connect to port 5202. Oh, I got to change it to 139 because the other one doesn't exist yet. 139. Enter. And we can see I'm getting eh, 10 gigs. Great. So we'll go ahead and stop that real quick because we're going to start these at the same time because if I do this at the same time, I can get 10 gigs 
by myself, but as soon as I start this one here again, got to do them on different ports. Now they're fighting for bandwidth. So let's start this up one more time. So we're doing exactly the same time here. This one's connecting over port 5202. This one's 5201. My computer's on this side of the network here, going through this switch at 10 gigs and then going here. And this one's here. And they both go through the switch and are both hitting it at the same time. So we go here, here. And now they're just going to struggle for bandwidth between each other. So they're duking it out. And this is where the problem is. The TrueNAS Mini has all solid state drives. So it actually can provide a lot of data really fast. But if you can't pipe it through the network. Now, this is where LACP is really handy. When you do these link aggregations, we're going to show you how both of these computers at the same time can talk to 10 gigs. Now, what doesn't happen is you don't get 20 gigs. You don't get to have one computer. If it also has a link aggregation as well, it won't allow 20 gigs because of the way the streams work. So it's kind of protocol dependent. It And it's one of those misconceptions. Some people go, well, I did the iPerf test and I have one machine connected with it over here and another one over here, and they're not getting 20 gigs now. No, but the two streams, because the way it, the protocol works, each stream can be at 10 gig. All right, let's move this out of the way and actually show you how to get it set up now so we can get that extra speed. And like I said, I leave links to all the instructions and everything they have here. Now, depending on how you want to do this, the command line is how we'll do it second, but first we'll show you how to do it without going to the command line. And the reason I say go to the command line is what if you like the IP address you have and you want to drop it? Well, if I delete this IP address and reconfigure the interfaces, the web interface breaks. That's one of the advantages of doing it from the you know command line of the system itself, but pretty easy to do here. We're going to add Link aggregation, what's the name? Now this is important. The name has to be in this format. You can't just type anything you want there. So it has to be lag and then a number. So we're gonna type lag zero, laggy 10 gigs. And we can give a description whenever we want. We just gotta make sure this is called lag zero. Flag setting, what's the protocol? LACP, that way the switch is in communication with it. Flag interfaces, all right, we're gonna say IX0, IX1, we're choosing these. Now there is a note, someone may ask, well, what about these? Can you do all of them at once and bond them together? This is not recommended per the documentation that if the cards are using different drivers, there may be unusual or strange incompatibilities. Try at your own risk, it, it probably will have problems. I think when I tried it, it just broke. Uh, so not ideal. So you have a network interface, you have pairs of network interfaces. Uh, these are the ones you want to use, pair them together with the same type of driver they're using. In this example, they're going to be IX0 and IX1. Then we're going to assign an IP address and the IP address we'd said was 192.168.3.213 and then hit apply. Before we hit apply, we're going to go over here though and make sure our network switch is configured. Pretty straightforward and unify. We're going to go click this, look down at this port, and I've already got aggregation turned on. So we look at the profiles, and it's pretty simple in the way Unify handles it. You go from switching to aggregation, and you span the ports you want. So we did 13 and 14, which are these ports. Interesting side note. Inside of Unify, white is to designate that it is a 10 gig connection, and green is a 1 gig connection. When these interfaces are not configured and said to be disabled, they just show one gig. thought that was kind of interesting. And as soon as we enable them, they're actually going to go and show uh, that they're actually connected at 10 gig. So I've already done aggregation, and this needs to be turned on on a switch before you apply, or it's going to have some errors because it, well, it can't negotiate the protocol unless it's turned on. So link aggregation, lag zero, and apply. Then test changes. Confirm. It's going to now do that actual negotiation and talk to it. Save changes, don't forget that or it will revert. I have left that sitting there for a minute and well, that'll cause a problem. Uh, it'll revert back. Now, once this is done, description, laggy 10 gigs, and we're gonna go back over here to edit. You can change the description, but everything is pretty much, you can change IPs, but now that they're tied together, they're tied together. We can't actually change the protocol again. You'll have to delete the interfaces, just a heads up on that. So now we have this IP address, which is the one we're operating on. And now we have this IP address that is the one that is the link aggregation. 
And we can go over here and do our little 10 gig test again. But first we'll ping it, make sure, make sure it works. Great, it works. Now, because I have this over here still running, it binds to whatever new interfaces show up. So iperf is still running over here and it's just bound to the new extra IP address we added. So we can actually do the same test again, but just change the IP address to 213. And we'll do them simultaneously here. 213, so this one's going to 5201, 5202, enter, enter. 10 gigs, 10 gigs. So now they're both talking at 10 gigs simultaneously. And as we show right here, go back over to draw.io, the system over here, 10 gigs is looking at these two, we're just gonna assume it's the bottom two are bonded together. So this is able to figure it out and say, hey, I'm going over here and this one comes over and the LACP on the switch goes, yep, we have plenty of bandwidth for you. We're just gonna put you on that other cable. So now we can just do it one more time and show you that simultaneously, both of these are getting the 10 gigs. Pretty straightforward setup, pretty easy to do. Now back to that other scenario, let's go ahead and delete this interface and walk you through doing it from the command line. So go back over here. And delete the interface. Test, confirm. Save, save. Changes are made permanent. Now we're back to where we started. All right, we're now we're gonna configure it from the command line interface. So we choose. Link aggregation option two. We want to create a link aggregation. We want to choose option two, LACP. And now we get to pick the interfaces in there. So we're going to pick interface two. Interface two. And I'm pressing twos, it's just letting you choose which one's on there. And then Q to quick, because we're done choosing interfaces. And like I said, we don't want to mix and match different ones. And please note, it excluded the one that's already configured, which we're actually logged into. But we could have redone this and chose that interface, like delete the interface and away we go where we do that. So configuring the members. All right. Now we want to configure the network interface and we can even go here and press one. And now I could go and press one again and delete that CX L zero if I want to delete it, but we actually just want to configure the lag interface. So we'll choose lag zero. Now it just names it automatically lag zero. You don't have to do anything. Do you want to delete the interface? No. Remove current settings uh, for this interface. No, because we want to add it. Configure IPv4. Yes. Interface name. Default it to lag zero. 196.163.213. I'm sorry. So 192.168.3.213. That mask, we can type 24, or you can type out 255, 255, 250. I don't care about IPv6. So I'm going to be mad about that. Configure failover settings. No. Give it a second, restarting network. And you notice behind the screen there, it flickered for a second and then came back. So we'll move this out of the way. And there's the same setup that we had, all configured from the command line. And like I said, I could have chose this one and bonded these two together. It would have allowed me to reset it because you would actually first go in and delete that interface, which when you go to configure network interface, I can say one, and delete interface and just say yes, and then go through the build process. This would be a way you could do it so you could build it and have it function in terms of uh, not having to change IP address, you could reuse the same IP address, which you can't do through the web interface because the moment you delete the interface, you lose the ability to keep configuring it through the web interface. I know it seems obvious, but this question does seem to come up a bit. So let's go ahead, no and no, 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 don't set anything. I think I may have clicked the wrong thing. Whoops, there we go. It'll just close it and go back out. Now, once again, we can, if I'm willing to run through the test again, I can run iperf again and see it'll work, but you can see that these are working both at 3.213. Now, it's really that simple to get this working. It's pretty straightforward if you have, especially like one of those Intel four port cards that are popular because you have the one gig ones or you have a series of SFP. These happen to be RJ45 type, but it'll work whichever way. And back over to our Unify system, now that the link aggregation is set up, if we look over here, they've turned white and show the aggregation working on there. Now, like I said, the prerequisites are very important though, that you have these turned on 
with the aggregation because if you don't, this is what will end up happening. We'll just go ahead and turn it off real quick on these. We'll just put it back on switching. It's going to take a second and you'll see actually the Unify after it provisions and updates this is going to realize there's a problem with it and we're going to try to ping it over here. It's getting confused because it's getting duplicate replies because the system is trying to do it and the switches aren't in LACP mode. FreeNAS is talking LACP, the switch isn't, so now you get a confusing problem. This is also something we've helped people troubleshoot when they're trying to figure this out. They usually just have a setting wrong in the switch. I just wanted to show this is the result you'll get because you get these. It's pinging right now, but it it is kind of random. I'm going to guess after this refreshes again. Go ahead, see what it's doing. Without it proper aggregating, it's not going to work properly. This is, so we did get some duplicate packets. You get weird results sometimes when you have something not in the mode. So do make sure your switch properly supports LACP. It's, the protocol has been around for a while and it's configured to do that if you want it to work properly. Matter of fact, we can probably go back over here, pull open a shell. Yeah. Interface stop distributing, possibly flapping. You can kind of see where this is kicking out errors because we don't have them configured properly. I just want to bring this up because it's a quick troubleshooting. Run over to D message, take a look, see what you're getting uh, from the system. You're going to get weird results if you don't have the protocols matched. So I do recommend uh, checking that and look for these type of errors because maybe you have a misconfigured switch because not every switch implements it the same. I do admit Unify does it pretty easy because you just check a box and hit apply. You know, some of the other ones, it does require some command line config. So you may have missed a step on that. Uh, but I'll leave links to the documentation from FreeNAS and uh, hopefully you get this working. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.